Now it's always exciting when Bricks Builder releases an update and today we're going to be checking out the two key new features that will be forthcoming in 1.6. This is the beta version we're checking out so there are a couple of little glitches and quirks but once the final version releases they should all be ironed out. Now the two key new features are interactions and the pop-up builder. These are things that I know people have been asking for for quite some time. So let's take a look at a simple example and let me show you just some of the ways in which you can start using these features when they release. I will also link to the details down below for the changelog. You can download and install this yourself if you have an active license for Bricks. I'll also link to the video that Thomas released recently, which will cover various different aspects of this in more detail. So check that out if you want to find out more. So this is a simple example. This is my test page. If we take our mouse pointer outside, you can see we get this little pop up to say, do you want to do something? This is just one simple way of interacting. We can then go ahead and close that down if we don't want to see it. And there's various different ways we can set that closure up. This is using a combination of the pop up builder and interactions alongside some of the features we've already got, things like conditions and so on, to choose where and when this actually will display on your site. So now we've seen a really simple example. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on behind the scenes. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create the actual pop-up template itself. So hopping into the dashboard, we're going to come into bricks and we're going to go into templates. And inside templates, we're going to click to add a new template in. We'll give this a name. And we're going to go ahead over to the template type on the right hand side. And this is the key important factor. You need to set this now as the new option, which is pop up. We'll choose that and we'll click on publish or save draft, whichever you prefer. And we'll edit this with bricks. Now you'll notice when this loads in, it looks a little different to a standard template. We have a sample of a pop up displayed on our screen with the kind of overlay effect. We can control and customize all the options available here for us. So let's do that first and then we'll take a look at how we build our pop up out and then how we can set up conditions and those kinds of things. So let's go ahead and set up the basics now for our pop up. So what we're going to do. I'm going to come to our settings and we're going to go into our template settings. You'll see we have a new entry now called pop up. We can click to open that up and inside here we can set the various different values for our actual pop up container, template, those kinds of things. So first of all, let's set the background color. We'll change that. We're going to go for this blue color and we're going to adjust the opacity on that. We're then going to come down and if you want to add any kind of padding for the content, you can do that. But all I want to do is set the width of this to be 600 pixels and that will control the size of the actual pop-up itself. Now it doesn't show anything on here at the moment because we have nothing in there. You can add interactions at this point, but I don't really want to do that. We've also got conditions. So let's come back out of this, let's minimize this, let's open up our conditions and let's set up where we want this to actually appear. So we'll click to add our condition, we'll open this up and for this example, we'll choose entire website. However, you can be more selective you may have this on a specific page about selling a specific product or a course or something, and the pop-up would only appear on that particular page. You can set that up using the conditions. For this though, we'll set entire website. Once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and come back out of this, and we're gonna go ahead and add in some elements. So this is where the first bug quirk kind of thing comes into play. If we go ahead and add anything inside here, so let's click the plus, drag our heading in, You'll see if we look at the structure on the right hand side, nothing actually appears inside there. Not until we click inside and make some change to this. So we call this subscribe. Once we make changes, it now appears in the structure and the options open up on the left hand side. So we are quick, I'm sure when the final version is actually released, that will be ironed out and any problems we got rid of. But with that being done, we can then go in and we can style this if we want. So we can change our color for our typography, for example. We'll change the font size to like 42. We'll change the typography and we'll use Barlow and we'll set this to be 700. So we've now put our first item in. Let's go ahead and add one more in, which in this case is going to be a form. This will be our kind of subscribe form. Again, you can see the same problem. Nothing appears over on the right hand side. No options are available inside the left hand side. To combat that, what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we'll just adjust quickly the margins or the padding or something. And again, you see as soon as we do that, all the options appear. It's kind of a weird quirk, but it is what it is. So the final thing we need to do is create that sort of close option. To do that, we're going to come over to our elements one more time. We're going to search for icon and we're going to just bring that into our design. So we'll drop that inside. Again, you see it 
appears, but nothing shows up. So let's just go and deal with that by just simply putting a bit of spacing there. Doesn't really matter what we do. In all honesty, I'm going to put in some negative spacing or negative margins, and then we're going to push that over to the right hand side. I'm going to position that. And then the final thing I want to do is change the icon itself. So that makes a bit more sense. So we'll change that to this little X. We'll change the color on this so it stands out to this kind of reddish color and we'll change the font size on here to be 42. There we go. So we now cr created our basic pop up. Let's save this to make sure we commit those changes. Now we need to do a couple more things before we can go ahead and start using this. The first thing I want to do is make this X, this little icon actually work. At the moment, it doesn't do anything. If we preview this, you can see we hover over it, nothing happens because well, we've done nothing to it other than put an icon in there. So to deal with that, we'll make sure the icon is selected. We're going to come over and we've got a new option now called interactions. If we click, we can go ahead and add in a new interaction. And this is incredibly simple, but can be very, very powerful. So we need to do two things. First of all, we need to set up the first trigger and interaction. To do that, we're going to say this is when it's clicked, do something. So we'll choose click. The action is going to be to hide an element. And then we're going to choose from the three options of the target and select a pop up. And in this example, we're going to choose the My Pop-Up, which is the template we've just created for our pop-up. So now when we click it, it will actually now close down. The next thing I want to do, and this is purely optional and just showing you because there's another way of using these interactions. We want to have some kind of animation effect when you hover over it to give some kind of user visual feedback. To do that, let's add another interaction in. You can see that now stacks that. We can change the relationship between these to be and or or. For this example, we're going to choose or. So we'll do one or the other. Trigger is going to be hover this time. So when you mouse over it, the action is going to be to start an animation. We'll then choose our animation. And for this example, let's do something like wobble. Doesn't really matter too much in this example. And you can set up an animation duration, delays, those kinds of things. So we've now set up two basic interactions on the little icon. Let's go ahead again and save this. So now that we've set up the basics for our icon, we set the close up and our pop up is all ready to go. The next thing we need to do is set the interaction that triggers the actual pop up itself. Now to do that is a little bit kind of hidden away until you know where you're looking for it. And it can cause a bit of confusion sometimes. What we need to do is come back out into our settings and we're going to go into our template settings, back into pop up and scroll right the way down and you'll see you've got interactions. So this is the interactions for this pop up. So now if we click to open that up, this is going to work in a very similar fashion to what we've just seen. We set up the actual close icon. We're going to set our trigger. What do we want to happen to actually trigger this pop up? For this example, you can see we've got our click and hover and focus like we've recently seen. We've also got things like enter viewport, leave viewport. You've then got browser and window based options. So for example, if a user scrolls, content is loaded, the mouse leaves a window, those kinds of things. This is another type of set of triggers. So for this example, we're going to say mouse leaves the window. In other words, when the mouse goes outside the browser, we want to fire this. So we'll choose that. We set the action to say that we want to show an element. Like we've seen before, we're going to set our pop up and we're going to choose the template for our pop up. So let's go ahead and save this. And now we can go ahead and take a look at our page and we should see this is actually going to pop up and work correctly. So let's refresh our page. And now we find if we come outside the window, our pop up appears like we saw previously. We can click the little X now, which animates when we hover over it and that'll close it down. We can keep on doing that. But you'll notice there's a couple of other things. First of all, when we hover over the little X, we don't get the little pointing finger that we're kind of used to. So that's one thing we need to deal with. But also, you don't really want to keep bugging the user by this popping up every time they try to go outside. So you may want to limit that. So let's see how we can do it. So coming back into our template for our pop up, let's select our icon one more time. Let's come back out to the options. So let's just click the interactions. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into layout and scroll through and you'll see there's this new miscellaneous section and cursor is available inside there. Let's select that and say link and status. We're going to say pointer. So now that will change that to the pointer when you hover over it. So that's the first thing that we set up and handled. The next thing we want to go ahead and do is stop this from opening up multiple times. We might only limit just to open up once when they try to exit and that is all it, it does. So again, like we saw before, let's come back over to our settings, back into our template, back into pop up, scroll down to our interactions and open this up. 
And you see there's an option that allows us to trigger this and say run only once. We'll choose that, we'll refresh and save the page, we'll refresh this page, and then we'll try it. So we click outside, our pop-up appears. We come over our little X, it animates and we now get the pointy finger, so we can close that down, come back outside, and it doesn't happen anymore. So pretty cool, we can set things up like that. So now we've set this to trigger only one time, we can set it on specific pages, we can set conditions up, all those kinds of things. But what if you wanted to set it on something like this button? You wanted to click this button and that pop-up would appear. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we could do that next. Now, before we go any further, let's go ahead and remove the interaction that we currently have set up for when the mouse exits the window. So we'll click to delete this. We'll save our template for our pop-up and then we're done. So we're gonna come out of that this time and go into the page we wanna edit with the button on to trigger it. So what we need to do now is select our button we're going to come over and we're going to choose the option for interaction. So you can see the interactions are in lots of different locations. So we can set up different interactions across parts of our site, which is pretty cool. So let's choose that interaction. We'll click the plus like we saw before. This time we're going to set the trigger to be click. We're going to set the action like we've seen before to say show element. The target is going to be pop up. Choose our my pop up. We'll click save. That's it. That's all you need to do. Let's refresh now. Let's click on our learn more button. And there's our pop-up. Click out the X, close it down, click it. You can see that will keep on opening up. But you'll notice again, we've got the pointer is missing when you hover over this button. So again, you can deal with that exactly the same way. You can make sure you've got the button selected. If we come to the settings, if you make sure you've got the button selected, click out of interactions, come into style, into our layout and scroll down. And you can see there's our cursor option under miscellaneous. Set that to be pointer, save our page, so now with the page reloaded, if we come over our button, you can see we get the little pointy finger, what we'd expect to see. We'll click and there's our pop-up. We can click to close it down. And all the normal things we'd expect to see, the little pointers, the interactions, the animations, all those things set up using the new features inside Bricks Builder 1.6. This is the beta, so don't use it on a live site. But if you've seen this when this is released, hopefully this will give you a head start on how you can start using the key new features in 1.6 for the pop-up and the interactions. As always, all applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tets, and until next time, take care.